Greetings from the nest, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to come and watch our videos. We really appreciate it. Today, as you can see, I'm back in the shop where everything happens. Uh, we're going to start off today with a video uh, from Leonard Weiser, who is building a, a celebrity, and he's going to show you how he installs his engine mount on that celebrity. Now, Leonard has graciously offered me more videos and so if you like what you see make some comments below in the comment section and I'll forward them on to Leonard and and uh, he'll share more and more he's got to kind of go back uh, to some old videos and overdub so it's a bit of work so if you appreciate it let me know and I'll let him know after Leonard's video I'm going to show some uh, show some videos and stills of the SF1 Archon being unloaded uh, here at the shop uh, I want to thank uh, Marianne and Prachi and uh, Juliet for uh, helping us to uh, get it off the out of the container safely and, and onto the shop floor. And um, we are in the process of uh, looking the aircraft over uh, this prototype and uh, seeing what needs to be worked on for, you know, to bring it up to a level where we can show it at uh, the Sport Air USA booth at uh, Air Venture Oshkosh 2022. So we've got quite a bit of work ahead of us for that, but. Uh, something that we're really looking forward to digging into. Uh, I'm going to share some uh, world-class modeling uh, that uh, Glenn Brzezinski has has uh, shared with me. He is building a classic and um, he is a, uh, a modeling guru of some sort <laughs> and uh, he has, uh, as you can see, I've put it up here, he's, he's shared with me some very, very nice uh, um, some prints of the the rib for the classic and uh, I think maybe we might even make some prints of this and offer them up as a, a subscription uh, reward uh, or promotion so uh, stay tuned for that I'll, I'll think about how I'm going to offer that up I want to mention that we're going to be offering a special promotion for all of 2022 now the way we're going to structure this is the first person to order their kit each month will get a $1,500 US US dollar discount off of their kit and um, so if you're thinking about you know you're on the fence maybe this will kick you off the fence uh, give us a call talk to us uh, and hopefully you're the first person to uh, to, to do it for that month and um, and like we're gonna offer 12 positions that uh, that, that see a, a discount for for kit purchases so uh, don't wait to give me a call and lastly I want to tell you about a couple of new products that we're going to be offering. Uh, we're, we're going to be manufacturing uh, the ring mount that you would buy for a Rotex 912. Uh, we're going to come up with our own version of it and offer that uh, to the public at a more tra attractive price than where you might find it elsewhere. As well we're going to be offering a ring mount for the Polini engines in a tractor uh, configuration for the Thor 250DS and 303DS. This ring um, will allow you to weld pipes to it that would attach to your firewall that would give you a more uh, a usual uh, engine mount configuration and we'll be offering it uh, welded but not powder coated so that you can uh, do the rest of the welding uh, that you want to your own uh, airframe and uh, then, uh, then powder coat it afterwards. Uh, we also have in-house design capabilities where we can design uh, if you give us the engine mount and, and uh, thrust line and uh, output flange distance for your application we can uh, quickly uh, develop a, a, a full mount for you if you want uh, here, at, here at Fisher. Without ado, here's Leonard Weiser mounting his uh, radial engine mount to his celebrity. Here we go. This is Fisher Flying Products. I'm Dave Hertner. Welcome to The Nest. Our video newsletters provide weekly insight into building and flying our 15 wooden aircraft designs. Polini Motori of Italy is a gracious sponsor of our channel. Polini's the manufacturer of the Thor 303DS. Cozy Carb Ice Prevention Systems is a proud sponsor of this channel as well. Please take the time to watch our videos to the end as this assists us in the metrics that YouTube uses to rate our channel. Hit the like button if you feel that the content is worthy. We invite you to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button and hitting the bell so that you are notified whenever we post our newsletters. Hi Dave, Lenny Weiser here and the time has come to 
install the engine mount on the Celebrity project. So on the screen what you see is the uh, Rotec radial engine R2800 engine mount that was made for me by the Rotec engineering people. And uh, I'm going to show in this video uh, the process I used to, uh, to get it onto the fuselage. You know, this is one of those processes that I think your viewers would like to see because it's one of those things that you have to sort of get it right the first time or there's an awful lot of uh, rework associated with uh, getting it right after this. So a couple of things I want to point out uh, before we get into the plans and actually show the process. First, um, there's probably a difference between what your viewers see and in terms of what you supply in the kits and the firewall here. I'm using 16,000 uh, stainless steel. Uh, I'm plan plans building this. I chose to use that instead of the galvanized aluminum. Uh, also, there's a lot of black tape that you see right now on the uh, on the firewall. Um, that's holding the firewall to the plywood bulkhead behind it. Uh, we're going to be using that as a sandwich uh, throughout the process. And there's also pieces of tape there that are actually just holding it to the fuselage itself while we use the, the bulkhead, the firewall, and the engine mount together as a, uh, as a drill guide. Now let's take a look at the plans. So here we are on print 7, and probably the most important thing to recognize right up front is that we want the thrust line of the engine to be in this yellow region that you see on the screen right now, which is about 1 to 3 inches below the top longeron um, on the fuselage. Another important point here is that there is a laminated bow that the arrow is now pointing to, and that laminated bow when you when you construct that you construct that against a piece of plywood that is in the same shape of the firewall and serves as a back plate to, to it now as we zoom in on where those bolts actually attach you kind of get the feeling that there's really not a whole lot of room uh, and there isn't so when you plan your engine mount uh, if you're not using a continental engine which is specified on the on the plans uh, you really need to make sure that you're, you've got the thrust line and enough space accounted for. Now, in my case, I'm using a Rotec radial engine. So uh, the Rotec folks uh, helped me out with this, and uh, you can see where the thrust line is on the engine. And we've used this to position the top row of bolt positions for that engine mount. And that thrust line is incredibly important, uh, as you're going to see as we move on in this process. So here we go. So what you see here, I've transferred the top row bolt position uh, onto the fuselage, and there you can see the plywood bulkhead and the stainless steel firewall in front of it. Now what we want to do is we want to really make sure that we get at least one of those bolt positions just perfect as a starting point for where we position the firewall. So I'm using a piece of paper, and I'm taking the actual engine mount, and I'm playing it, like, simply laying it on the piece of paper so that it, it, it fits nicely. I'm using a transfer punch, uh, you can get these at places like Harbor Freight and other hardware stores. And I'm going to make a mark. You don't really need to use a hammer like I'm using here. Uh, you know, the mark doesn't need to be as big as it's going to be making here. The, the punch itself has got enough weight to uh, make the mark. But what you're going to do is make some marks on that piece of paper for each pair of holes that the engine mount has, front to back, uh, side to side, and uh, and measure them. Uh, you know, I I like to. This is a pretty precise uh, operation. So, um, uh, those of you guys not on metric, you need to learn a little bit of metric stuff here and and uh, use some use some centimeters and millimeters because it'll really help you out in the end. So, I simply just take your ruler and measure uh, each pair uh, of lines. Now, um, I should mention going back a, a few scenes there. Uh, the, the thrust line on the engine, there you can see the measurements uh, on the mount. The thrust line on the engine is, is incredibly important. In the case of the Rotec radio, we're using a very, very large prop, which kind of over overcompensates for, the, uh, for the, the fact that the thrust line on the Rotec has got to be a slightly lower than that one to three inches specified in the plans. And here what we're doing is we're taking the first uh, we're taking, simply taking a center punch and punching that very, very first position after calculating exactly where it is uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the stainless steel. And now I'm going to use that same uh, transfer punch. Uh, and because there is a slight indentation there that the center punch made, 
uh, we can actually use it to index the mount into this position. And once we do that, we simply repeat the process or for the corresponding bolt hole on the other side of the mount, which uh, you'll see me do here in a moment. And uh, once we do that, then we can uh, start using the mount itself to uh, uh, align the last two holes, the ones that are in the back. So that's, uh, that's simply all that's happening here, taking the center punch. And here you see I've got a bolt in this other hole just for video purposes, but there was a, we did use a center punch for it. Notice also there's the, uh, the, the laminated bow, and here it's sitting on my workbench, but imagine that sitting on the, uh, on the firewall. So at this point, we're ready to drill that very, very first hole, which is our data. So we start off with, uh, this is stainless steel, so we're starting off with an eighth inch uh, cobalt drill bit. And uh, you make a couple of quick little marks there so your drill bit doesn't uh, wander all over the, the, the metal. Using a drill guide, a simple simple drill guide to keep that, that straight. Uh, these are nice little drill guides. You can get these easily on the internet. Lots of places have them. Uh, now I'm going to use a, a uh, some people call these a unibit or a speed bit. Uh, these are very, very, very good for making nice round holes. And uh, they uh, this this particular one I bought at the Harbor Freight people. Um, you can uh, imagine that it might be hard to get through stainless steel, but it really isn't at all. And sorry for the focusing problem on the camera. The, the uh, the video camera had autofocus on it, so um, it sort of had a hard time figuring out what to focus on. And once we do that, we simply repeat the process on all the other positions. And they've all been punched, and uh, we, we just carefully do it. And now we've got the drill guide actually was used just to make those holes in this uh, metal and plywood sandwich. Uh, and now we simply transfer that over to the airplane. Uh, now I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to hold the camera with one hand and I'm trying to uh, position this with the other. But uh, fortunately, the, the uh, laminated bow keeps it nice and steady on the plane. And here I just switch scenes so you can see it. So at this point, the fuselage is not drilled, but the sandwich is. I put some bungees on here and the engine mount. And simply before we even drill this, the... Um, the bolts, and I put the laminated punch in there, the, uh, sorry, the transfer punch in there, are holding the engine mount just fine in place. And because the uh, firewall and, and uh, bulkhead sandwich has got the holes drilled in the right place, and because that is uh, indexed to the fuselage itself, uh, you know, we should have a very, very good fit for the, for the engine mount. There I just simply took the transfer punch and put some marks uh, for the drill to get started with, and uh, even though I really didn't need to do that, we're using a 3 8 inch uh, drill bit. I'm using A and 6 bolts on this, and drill right through the fuselage uh, there, and nothing is moving at all. Uh, wouldn't hurt to have somebody come and help you to just make sure everything stays nice and steady. The bolts go in real easy, and uh, once the bolts do go in, I'll show you a view here from the other side of it. Now you can see that really tight space. Uh, I didn't push the bolt in all the way there because I want to get an AN 970 uh, washer in place uh, that fits around that uh, that AN 6 bolt. And now I'll take a, a nut. Right now I'm just using a fiber nut uh, to hold it in place while I uh, work on other aspects of the front of the airplane and the, and the fuselage. Um, these nuts I'll probably discard and put AN 363s in there at the end. So that's it. Um, anybody have any questions, you can get a hold of me at uh, Lenny, L-E-N-N-Y, at woodbiplane.com. Thanks for watching. We recently received the SF-1 Archon uh, prototype from Greece in a container. And uh, this video shows us uh, working together to get the aircraft unloaded safely and onto the shop floor. We're very pleased to have this aircraft prototype in our hands, and uh, you'll be seeing more of it as uh, time progresses. So I hope you enjoy the unloading video at multiple times speed.
I want to start off by apologizing to Glenn for butchering his name. His last name should be pronounced Bruski. And um, I, uh, he called me up year, a few years ago uh, telling me he was building his classic and that uh, he had uh, talents in the drawing department and modeling department and, and uh, has sent me some very interesting uh, photos and drawings and models over the years as he's worked out um, some questions with me on his design on the design of the aircraft and eventually he'll have the whole uh, classic aircraft modeled which is a, a wonderful uh, access to information for us uh, it's something that we've never been able to um, to do as a company to take all of the designs and throw them into a full model so thank you Glenn for for doing this as you can see we've got three uh, photos being shown here um, the first one of that rib that I told you about at the beginning and then the last two were as Glenn was working out some um, uh, strut design issues and how they related to the uh, to the spars and control system so you can see that in the last drawing so and again thanks Glenn for all that you do for me and uh, all those people who submit information and drawings and things that they've done and good ideas um, we really appreciate um, the community behind us and uh, that's supporting the designs and trying to make it better for everyone who is out there building and so that we have the repository of information that uh, um, makes it easier for everyone so again thanks thanks a lot Glenn thanks again for watching we try hard to bring you interesting content each week to help us out please like and share our videos if you feel the content is worthy to receive the latest info from Fisher flying products click the subscribe button and ring the bell see you next time in the nest